Hello everyone, this is Catherine again, and I am so excited. I finally finished my summer reading list. Yeah, less than a week before fall starts. Yeah, I'm really behind, but in my defense, I had six books on my list. So, there's that, and they're not all super thin. They're all averaging about um, 250 to 300 words each, which I know for some people, you just eat through that. And I used to be one of those people. I used to like um, read books super fast, but um, I don't know what's gotten into me lately, but I just cannot read very fast anymore, nor do I really have an abundant amount of time to read anymore because of uh, jobs. I mean, I'll have more time to read now that um, I'm no longer teaching music, but uh, yeah, anyway. So I just wanted to do a giant book review video on all these wonderful books that I got to read. Um, some of them I read for work, because um, if you may or may not know, I actually work at Barnes & Noble now. It's kind of fun. Actually, it's very fun. <laughs> Gives me an excuse to expand my library, which is always awesome. Um, and two of these six books I read for work... Um, for a book club and the other one for an author event. So that was pretty fun. Um, they're books that I normally would not have even picked up. Um, and I actually sat down and read them. So I'm also expanding my horizons in doing so. So that's really cool. Um, I encourage you all, if you're looking for a new book to read, check out one or all of these books. They're, uh, there's not a bad one among them, honestly. Um, so yeah. Um, here's my list, not the monthly, yeah, ignore that. This is my list of books that I had. Um, went on screensaver, sorry. Um, Clock Dance by Ann Tyler, Free Chocolate by Amber Royer, All We Ever Wanted by Emily Giffen, Sherlock the Blind Banker by Stephen Moffat, A Study in Charlotte by Brittany... Cavallero, sorry, and then the last one on the list, but certainly not least, is Cinder by Marissa Meyer. Um, some of these books are part of a series. Some of them are standalone novels. Um, I think only two of them are standalone novels, actually. I read a lot of book series. So yeah, um, first we're going to start off by talking about Clock Dance by Ann Tyler. This was our Barnes & Noble book club um, book read this past month. Um, we had an amazing book club led by moi. It was uh, super fun. I'd never led a book club before, so I was super excited to have the opportunity to do that. I make cupcakes and everything. It was so fun. And um, so anyway, this is definitely not a book I would have picked up on any given day. This is something that is um, definitely a new horizon for me. Um, so a little bit about Clock Dance. Um, the synopsis is an inspiring novel of one woman's transformative journey. Um, I'm just going to read a bit of the inside cover for you so you can get an idea of what the book was uh, generally about. Willa Drake can count on one hand the defining moments of her life. Um, in 1967, she is a schoolgirl coping with her mother's sudden disappearance. In 1977, she is a college co-ed considering a marriage proposal. And in 1977, she is a young widow trying to piece her life back together. And lastly, in 2017, she learns to be a grandmother, but isn't sure she ever will be. Um, I don't want to read much more of that because I want you to um, pick up the book and read it yourself. Um, but the last bit of it says, A bewitching novel of hope, self-discovery, and second chances Clock Dance gives us Ann Tyler at the height of her powers. Ann Tyler is a pretty um, pretty popular author. If you've never read an Ann Tyler book, um, I would highly recommend um, reading at least one. Clock Dance is um, the first one of hers that I've read, but I definitely want to read um, one of her other ones, like A Spool of Blue Thread or Vinegar Girls or um, one of those. Um, but, yeah, Clock Dance is pretty good. Um, I'm going to consult my Goodreads app here now to give you um, what I said about the novel. I ended up giving it, can you see? Can you see? Hang on. 
you can't see that. Okay, so I will just read it out to you. I ended up giving it four out of five stars. Um, it captured me. It really did. It was a um, quick read. It um, started off very um, fast-paced and very, um, you know, like I said, it captures you from the very beginning. Um, the reason why I didn't give it five stars, though, is um, it has some weird characterizations in it. Um, some of the characters are um, not very realistic in my point of view. I mean, I don't want to give anything away, obviously, but um, they're just not super um, with the times. And um, also, another reason why I didn't give it the five-star rating um, was because it just had the weirdest ending. And um, once again, at the risk of giving away anything, it just kind of left you hanging. And um, I did some research, and she's not going to continue it like with a series. It's a standalone novel. So the fact that it just kind of leaves you hanging kind of bothered me a little bit. Um, I think that most books, in one way or another, that are standalone novels should wrap up with a nice bow. That's just me, as a reader and an author. That's just how I feel. Um, you may love that ending if you pick up the book and read it. You never know. Um, everybody's different. I have a employee, um, a fellow employee of mine, um, who's actually a superior of mine. She read the book and came to the book club that I led, and she loved the novel. So, you know, like I said, to each their own. Um, I didn't hate it. I, like I said, captured me, fast-paced. But it was just a little off. Um, just enough that I could not give it five stars. So, yeah, that's okay, though. Um, still a good novel. All right, the second one on my list is um, All We... No, sorry. is Free Chocolate by Amber Royer. So, I'm excited to talk about this one. Because this was our author event this past um, August. Amber Royer is a local author. She's, and by local I mean in the DFW area. She's a sci-fi author and she um, is also quite the chocolate connoisseur. Kind of like I'm obsessed with tea. She's really into chocolate. Hence the name of her book, Free Chocolate. Um, this is kind of a uh, sci-fi melodrama novel. It's really fun. Um, it's really, it's just a real looking good time. It's uh, got a lot of very, very um, transformative characters and a lot of um, just really fun scenes in it. Um, for people like myself that don't read a ton of sci-fi, this is a friendly novel for anybody to pick up because, like I said, it's kind of the way she described it when she was selling it at our store is telenovela meets soap opera, space opera meets soap opera, that kind of thing. Um, so she kind of wrote it like a telenovela, which is a um, Hispanic soap opera kind of thing. So it's really um, fun. And it does have <clears throat> excuse me, some Spanish in it um, mixed in with English. So um, if you are a um, Spanish reader then you will understand all the n words with no problem. But um, if you are, like me, very much a single language person, and that would be English, it's totally okay because um, she does a lemony snicket, is how I um, like to describe it. She very much um, describes what the Spanish words mean in the same sentence, and eventually you catch on really fast. So it's really great. Um in that. The writing is very clear in that. Um, this book is um, the first in what's going to be a double trilogy, um, God willing, if she gets, um, you know, the publication and press that she needs for it, which it's really a great novel, so I hope she does. Um, I wish her all the best. Um, she signed this book for me, actually. It was really fun. To Catherine, welcome to the Chocoverse. So yeah, I'm a uh, she was so sweet um, at the author event. She was very personable, very friendly. She brought little chocolates for everyone that um, came up to the booth and everything. And then our Starbucks next to Barnes & Noble um, made a drink specially for her. So it was a super fun author event. And she just, she's a wonderful person. Uh, check her out on Instagram, Amber Royer Author. It's spelled Amber and then R-O-Y-E-R -E and then author. 
Um, yeah, she posts a lot of awesome stuff, including writing prompts and um, exercises for um, us wannabe authors. So it's great. Okay, a little bit about free chocolate. I'm going to read the, a little bit of the back. Latina culinary arts student Bo Benitez becomes a fugitive when she's caught stealing a priceless cocoa pod from a heavily defended plantation. In the far future, chocolate is Earth's sole valuable export, and it must be kept safe from a hungry galaxy. Now she's on the run, and she quickly realizes that she's a link that could lead to Earth's tasty treasure, a fact not lost on both her supposedly devoted and supposedly human boyfriend and a creepy reptilian cop. Um, I don't want to read more, but um, the end of it says, Blast off for a whole new galaxy of science fiction adventure as space opera meets soap opera. It's so fun. Such a fun novel. Um, so... Um, basically, in this world building, it's many moons in the future, and it, um, like stated, it is a, um, it is kind of a war over chocolate. It's super fun, um, if you're into chocolate. I mean, while reading the book, I totally had to, like, snack on some Hershey's bars while re reading it. It was just, the way she describes things, it's so great. Okay. <clears throat> um, on Goodreads, I gave this novel four out of five stars, just like Clock Dance. Um, this novel, like I keep saying over and over again, is super fun. It's, um, cute as well. The character, the main character is, um, very personable, very, um, you know, she's kind of a, um, kind of a... I don't want to say Katniss Everdeen, but she's very much a uh, Princess Leia kind of thing. She um, kind of starts off like, whoa, what am I doing? Help. And then she quickly gains momentum and quickly um, gets into her uh, quest, if you will. Um, the reason why I didn't give it the five-star rating, um, there were some inconsistencies in the book, um, not a ton, and I'm pretty sure they'll be resolved in the second book, Pure Chocolate. Um, so I'm not too concerned about that, um, but I, you know, it's just enough that it kind of dampened my view on the book. Um, also, I love you, Amber, if you're watching this. No, I love you, but the romance scenes need help. Um, I guess it's because of, um, you know, what's his name, um, Bo's boyfriend, I, starts, Brill, there we go, I totally lost it for a second, Brill is an alien, so he's a little bit, um, shaky on human, um, interactions and whatnot, so I guess that makes sense for him, but then there's another, um, I believe he's a Krom, there's another Krom alien that is a lot more, savvy with earth and relationships and whatnot so I'm a little confused on that but um <clears throat> other than those two very minor things I would highly recommend this book support your local authors guys support your local authors whether they are fan fiction writers short story writers poets or awesome novelists like Amber Royer support your local authors um, you can pick up a signed copy of Free Chocolate at Barnes & Noble Creek Walk off of 15th Street in Plano. We do still have some on the shelf, so, um, you can definitely go pick one up and check out that book. Support your local authors. There we go. All right, third book on the list is All We Ever Wanted by Emily Giffen. Um, <clears throat> this book got a lot of really good press. That's probably why my mom bought it, and when she ate it up, because my mom's a much slower reader than I am. When she ate this book up like candy, I was like, okay, I gotta read this. I, got, I gotta check it out. You know, I just, I gotta. So, um, I picked it up and, um, I picked it up. This one was, um, it started off really fast paced. Um, and it just kind of really jumps into everything, um, really quickly. Um, on my Instagram, excuse me, on my Instagram, I qu quoted it and, um, got a lot of very positive feedback on it because it was just so grabbing. 
um, the quote. It made you want to read the book. And it ha that quote occurs in the very beginning of the novel. So it's just kind of, um, that's great that she's able to just um, entrance readers so quickly. It's, I don't want to say a political novel because it's not. It's very much a social, um, <clears throat> social argument. Um, there is a big, well, that'll give away the book, but it, there is a big, um, social, um, argument about, um, women's rights going on. And I'm not going to say specifically which part of the women's rights movement, um, this book, you know, really talks about because I don't want to give it away. But if you're super into, um, you know, day to day news and what's going on in the world and what's going on with um, people's opinions. This is a really good novel um, to just kind of get that squared away and kind of, um, you know, get into it and create your own opinions, which is very impertinent to do in today's world. You got to create your own solid opinions on life. Okay, so in this riveting new novel from the number one New York Times bestselling author of Something Borrowed and First Comes Love, three very different people must choose between their families and their most deeply held values. Um, Nina Browning is living the good life after marrying into Nashville's elite. More recently, her husband made a fortune selling his tech business, and their adored son has been accepted to Princeton. Yet sometimes the middle-class, small-town girl in Nina wonders if she strayed from the person she once was. Tom Volpe, or is it Volpe? I, I never, I always said Volpe in my head because I thought it was a Hispanic word. Anyway, back to this. Um, Tom Volpe is a single dad working multiple jobs while struggling to raise his headstrong daughter, Lila. His road has been lonely, long, and hard, but he finally starts to relax after Lila earns a scholarship to Windsor Academy, Nashville's most prestigious private school. All right. Um, the rest of this is going to give away a big part of the um, novel, so I'm not going to read it. But um, this is one that I gave. Let me double check on my Goodreads app. I'm pretty sure I gave it, five, yes, I gave it five out of five stars. Um it gets going really fast and you read the novel. I think I finished this one within a week. Um, it's just all over the place and in a good way, in a very good way. It's all over the place and it's just, it makes you mad, like really mad. Um, like going to throw this book against the wall mad. Um, and it just, the characters, the relationships that build in this story are just ridiculous. I mean, really, some of these characters, did he really just say that? Like, really? He honestly thinks that he's that, that his shit don't stink? Like, really? Okay, it's just, it's just great. Um, and like I said, it very much um, dips into today's views and today's um, movements on um, social uh, concerns and whatnot. So definitely a book I think everybody should read, men and women alike. I find that um, women tend to read these um, female-fronted novels more often than men do, but this is one that I really would push for men to read because you really get a good glimpse into the female perspective in this novel, and that's super important for anyone to um, realize is there. So um, that's something that I would push on anyone. Um, I have recommended it several times whilst working at Barnes & Noble um, since reading the book. I think I've sold three to um, two to teenagers and one to a college student that was doing a book um, club. So yeah, um, any age group, any because you get different differentiating points of view throughout the novel as well. You get some not only from the adults, but you also get from the uh, teenager's perspective. So it's very, um, it covers all the bases pretty much. Okay, so the next one on the list is actually a manga that I read, um, Sherlock the Blind Banker. If anybody um, watching this is a fan of the BBC Sherlock um, TV show, read these. This is the second one, obviously, because the first three, um, the first three, um, 
episodes of Sherlock are uh, studying Pink, The Blind Banker, and The Great Game. I have all three of those. This is the second one that I've read. Um, it pretty much goes through the every scene of the show and it quotes it perfectly and it's just the the artwork in it is so great I mean they got they got Martin Freeman's nose just perfect I love it um and then they got Benedict Cumberbatch's eyes I mean as best as you can with a heterochromia pupil or iris whatever it's called um so yeah they got it pretty well um <clears throat> Like I said, these are great for anyone that's a fan of Sherlock, fan of Sherlock Holmes stories, fan of manga, fan of graphic novels. It reads more like a graphic novel, honestly, than a manga. It's just, um, it's great. Um, Mystery and Danger Lurk for Holmes and Watson, a series of murders and a set of mysterious symbols spell out danger for Sherlock and John in their latest case. This manga adapts The Blind Banker, the second episode of the smash hit Hartswood Films TV show starring Benedict Cumberbatch as Holmes and Martin Freeman as Watson. Extremely well done, certainly one for fans of manga and or Sherlock. So yeah, um, not much more to say about this. Of course, I gave it five out of five stars because I'm a huge Sherlockian, big um, Benedict Cumberbatch fan. He's my husband in case you haven't found out. I know he uh, is married, but you know, in my mind, he's married to me. You know, me. Okay, yeah. Enough about the creepy fangirling, but yeah. Um, <clears throat> he's um, he's a great actor, though. If you have never seen BBC Sherlock, watch that. If you have seen BBC Sherlock and are looking to read some um, adaptations of the, you know, TV show, pick these up. They're only like, yeah, they're only like 12 bucks. They're pretty great. Um... We have all three at Barnes & Noble Creek Walk. Anybody in the area that wants to pick one up, do the thing. All right. Um, that one was a short one. Also, it um, reads really fast. I think I read it in two days. Less, maybe. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah. Go away. I've been getting the weirdest phone calls lately. Okay. <clears throat> Just two more. I swear this video is almost over. I will not talk your ear off all day. But um, <clears throat> the last two really, really good novels. Um, they're both young adult novels, so if you don't read young adult fiction, don't stop the video because it really is, they really are great novels. So yeah. Um, <clears throat> and they're both on my Nook. So I'm going to just kind of try to show the Nook off. Um, the first one is A Study in Charlotte by... Um, Brittany Calvillaro. I always pronounce her name wrong. I apologize, Brittany Calvillaro. Um, holy shit. <laughs> this book is so great. <laughs> there is just so much to say about it. Um, so much to say and so much that I have to just kind of center out of my explanation because it'll give away so much and I don't want to give away anything on this book because you have to pick up a copy of this book and you have to read it. You just have to. Um, my mom is reading it now too and she just thinks it's adorable. Um, basically, this book is um, is a uh, modern day take on Sherlock Holmes and John Watson, but of course um, in this novel um, it's about the great great, great granddaughter and grandson of Holmes and Watson. So, of course, as fate would have it, they meet again. Um, you know, the Holmes and Watson duo happens again, and it's just fantastic. Um, Charlotte Holmes is a riot. She is so very perplexing and annoying and adorable and infuriating all in one, just like the original Sherlock Holmes. It's so great. Um, and then Jamie Watson, the narrator of the book. Um, <laughs> he's a rugby, um, rugby bull mastiff kind of character. And he's just great because he just kind of is like, like there's one part, I will give this away, um, where he um, talks about how... Um, on his grave, it's going to say, Jamie Watson. He didn't. Because <laughs> he just, 
you'll you'll get it once you read the book but he didn't <laughs> he just keeps repeating that throughout one chapter and it's like okay we get the point stop being so melodramatic it's so great um the entire novel is beautifully written it is um it is just so great it is so wonderfully um fun it's once again a um it's a riot it really is you just I was sitting in the mall reading this and I just I was cracking up and these little this little old lady and this elderly man um couple they were um sitting in the couches like right next to me and stuff and they kept looking over at me like I was mad or something it was so funny <laughs> um such a good novel um I got it on my nook because um once again I was reading it in the mall and I was reading it you know out in public and stuff um by the way if you don't have a nook I highly recommend this one for people that don't really need a tablet but want like a portable e-reader of sorts um the glow light 3 by Barnes and Noble it's great and the books are insanely cheap on here it's wonderful um so just to give you a little synopsis this one um has a long one and it's on um goodreads so it goes the last thing jamie watson wants is a rugby scholarship to sharingford a connecticut prep school just an hour away from his estranged father but that's not the only complication sharingford is also home to charlotte holmes the famous detective's great 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 granddaughter who has inherited not only sherlock's genius but also his volatile temperament um so yeah I don't want to read anything else, but it's really good. This one I gave five out of five stars, of course. It has so many nods to the original Sherlock Holmes. It's just perfect for Sherlockians and mystery and drama fans alike. Um, I actually wrote a review for this one. It says, such an adorable book, in all caps. Um, as a hardcore Sherlockian, I ate this novel up. Charlotte Holmes is a riot, and her relationship with Jamie Watson is so perfectly Sir Arthur Conan Doyle-esque in nature, as is Jamie's narration throughout the entirety of the story. I love, love, love all the things. I highly recommend this to any fans of mystery and drama. My fellow Sherlockians pick up a copy of this book immediately. So yeah, pick up a copy of this book immediately. Do the thing. Okay. So yeah. That was a study in Charlotte. And then last but certainly not least, um, I read Cinder, finally, by Marissa Meyer. Um, Cinder is the beginning of the Lunar Chronicles, um, a young adult series that's kind of part um, period novel part. Um, you can barely see that. Maybe if I turn. It's got a shoe on the cover because it's um, part part um, period novel, part fairy tale, part sci-fi adventure. So um, Cinder is great because not only does it encompass so many different um, genres in one book, but it also has very strong characters in it. Um, very strong characters that you just kind of can't help but fall in love with, especially the main character, the Cinderella character, if you will. Um, it's really great. Um, I will read the, um, synopsis. A forbidden romance, a deadly plague, Earth's fate hinges on one girl. Cinder, a gifted mechanic in New Beijing, is also a cyborg. She's reviled by her stepmother and blamed for her stepsister's sudden illness, but when her life becomes entwined with the handsome Prince Kai's, she finds herself at the center of a violent struggle between the desires of an evil queen and a dangerous temptation. So yeah, it's really, really great. Um, I don't know why it took me so long to finally pick up this book. It's been out for forever. I think the Lunar Chronicles are actually done already, but it's just, um, which is great actually, if you want to get into it, because then, um, because this book is going to eat you alive. It's one of those that, oh, I want to know what happens next. Oh, I still want to know what happens next. Oh God, what, what, what happens even after this? Yeah, it's one of those. Um, and I cannot wait to read Scarlet, the second book in the series, um, because it's just so very, um, engrossing and, um, 
I believe Scarlet introduces new characters even. And the way that Cinder was introduced and written out and stuff, I just can't wait to meet even more characters of Marissa's Ma Marissa Meyer's world. So yeah, um, I gave this book five out of five stars. It was so great. I also wrote a review. It says, I could not put this novel down. Cinder is such a perfect blend of sci-fi and fantasy. I loved reading into the foreshadowing, and the characterization was perfect as well. Definitely recommend this one to anyone out there that enjoys a good page turner. That's essentially what I've been saying, but you know. Um, once again, it was really cheap on the Nook. I think it was like $7, um, whereas it's like 11 something, 11.99 in the stores for uh, paperback. It's been out for a while, so it's it's kind of a good paperback novel to just pick up and read. Um, if you've got nothing better to do, just go pick it up and read it. It's great. Um, that concludes this book review video. I hope I sincerely hope that you will pick up at least one of these books and try it out um because first of all I have great taste in novels so the ones that I gave five stars which would be everything except for the first two um I mean just just try it out what what can hurt you know I mean it's just so great um I love books but yeah um definitely try out one or more of these novels um they're great fun they're great um stories none of them were bad um i just really hope that i can introduce you all to more novels in these uh book reviews my fall list is i think seven books strong and i've already started it so hopefully sometime in december i will be able to come back and one, two, three. Oh no it's also six so six strong. So hopefully, as I said, um, sometime in December, I'll be able to come back and give you another um, Catherine re book review kind of thing. So yeah. Alrighty. I hope you all have a lovely day. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.